think we're ready to go live. You're live. Am I? I believe I am. All right. Hello, hello, folks. Music turned down a bit. I guess probably a pretty good level on the music. And we are live. Howdy, y'all. Welcome, Maddie, Nuno, Lotus, uh, Hobo Banana. We got a plenty of the folks who are tip who have been here a lot lately in the house. Thank you for being here, folks. So working on the uh, on the Prusa Mark IV uh, enclosure. So box back there. We're going to be enclosing the Prusa Mark IV. Um, Prusa sent over the Mark IV to me a while ago. Not a while ago a bit ago and I've used it a little bit I used it in the shipping station revamp video where I did the uh, poo portal for the cats and everything so I did use this machine in that project because I needed another machine to keep up with my my uh, boron so printing ASA parts but uh, can you talk about the challenge Prusha gave you with that machine yet oh um uh, yeah, I did mention that. No. Well, okay, I can tell you this much. Uh, Heckbit's asking about, I did mention previously, Prusha kind of challenged me. I have an upcoming project. It's not going to be a small project. It's going to be a, like, at least that big printing project. Like, pretty sizable printing project. And they challenged me to just use the Mark IV to print the parts for it. Um... The, the point of it being however much I enjoy bigger machines and a bigger machine would make the project easier. We want to be able to just show folks that you don't need a big machine to achieve big things uh, with printing. So that's the overall goal for that project. Uh, I don't want I can't really say much more without spilling the beans, but I can tell you that much. The goal is to print something fairly big only using the Mark IV. So... Uh, Maddie, I did check my email. I didn't. I saw your email. I didn't have any time to to go through it last night, and haven't had any time today. I haven't really been in the studio yet today until now. So, and just before it was about to go live, uh, I was going to send. I believe, to my knowledge, the enclosure kit comes with all the printed parts I should need to put this together, except for like one or two optional ones. And I was going to send them to print on my uh, Voron, so we could be printing while we're while we were working on this. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, my 2.4 just no longer on Wi-Fi. Like literally, I was sitting there, I was about to hit print, and it suddenly disconnected from um, Orca Slicer, and I'm like, that's weird. Restarted the machine, nothing. It will not connect to my Wi-Fi out of nowhere. I just had to dig out a. Uh, ethernet cable and plug it in and hardwire it reboot the machine and now it's back up and running i have no idea why it reminds me i want to purge filament out of it and get it going i pull it up quick so yeah bed's not up to temperature yet i can extrude though weird stuff who knows it's extruding okay so technology be like that had that happen once had to do a fresh install yeah this is not the first time it did that to me i had it happen a couple of months ago which is part of the reason when i revamped the wall back here this light's not on part of the reason when i revamped this wall i put in um could mean only one thing invasion um when i did this whole wall build i put hard line hard line hardwired uh network connections in so there's a keystone plate right behind that that thing with two jacks and i did it specifically because that machine hiccuped on wi-fi a couple of months ago and i was like well if that happens again i need to be able to hardwire it at the drop of a hat here we are i had to hardwire it today here we go now that light's on kind of on time yeah we haven't really started yet tom so welcome to the stream in fact i should uh I should send out the quick twitter we're live Note. Copy. Copy the link real quick. 
Uh, if anybody's not familiar, not aware already, this is Mandic Rilly's Mandic Lab live channel. I'm live, apparently, Nero. Welcome. I, I hear you can go live now too again. I hear you can go live now too again. Did you come and watch? Did you come to watch me uh, deal with the misery of putting in a ton of screws? That's at least what everybody keeps telling me I'm in for here. Check the IP address sometimes. If it's not set static, it changes. Uh, it is set static. So that machine, all of my machines are static. Restored. Nero has risen from the flames of his cosplay gun um, banishment. So welcome back. The enclosure build isn't bad, just tedious. That's what I expected. I've been putting it off. I need to get it done. So we got to start by tearing down the Mark IV just a little bit so we can get to the point where we can put it into the enclosure. Ugh. I was peeking at the instructions beforehand. I hope I didn't miss anything. Probably did. Cosplay gets you banned now. When you're Nero, apparently it does. So, I got the instructions pulled up here. Um... Blah, blah, blah. Of course, the spool holder comes off. All right. And then we got to remove the power supply. They just tell you to remove the power supply. Um, or if someone reports you for waving around a firearm. Yeah. That's, I don't even understand that. Like, it must be just some random person because it's like one of your viewers would be smart enough. One would hope to not do that. Okay, uh, flash drive off. All right, we gotta tilt this thing up so we can get the electronics board off. Whee! Wasn't AI then? I mean, all companies are run by robots at this point, aren't they? Aren't they all run by robots now? Like we we all kind of know that. One of the film, one of the, somebody who didn't get their film in spool. At the. Uh, does this have a better angle? As I switch camera angles and can't even see what I'm looking at here, a little bit. Let me change that camera angle a little. Okay. Try this again. All right. Ground point off of here. That's so dumb. Woo. There we go. Okay. Video is fine, not live. Ah, that's so weird. So weird. All right, got to get this cable out from under here. I guess these can come out, can't they? They don't really serve a purpose once this screen's not on the front of the machine. I keep looking over here to look at the instructions. I can see the screen too. <laughs> All right, clips off. Yeah, I, I understand the idea of like, like uh, it does make sense to be stricter in live streams. They gotta police that a little more and you know, review it afterward. Just wish they would have like actually reviewed yours a little better. Uh, all right. I got cable tie there. Boop. All right. Wow, that is a tight bundle of wires. 
That is a tight bundle of wires. Okay. LCD cables are a little annoying to get, but that's not a big deal. All right, now I gotta get all the power supply. You got something to yap about on stream tomorrow. There you go. Always need something to talk about. Always need something to talk about. All right. I get these zip ties free because the power supply will be coming off as well. A black cardboard panel with sensor on it. I feel like that's playing with fire. Where's the cat? She's uh, snoozing. Actually, she's not snoozing. Andrew Rogers coming in for with the uh, ten dollars super chat. Thank you very much for the hydration fund. I will take a drink of tea on that one. Thank you. This channel is now monetized, so super chats are welcome. Um, I have. Let me know if there's any issue. I did, um, after the first stream, as I have the wrong angle, uh, after the first stream of, um, monetization, I disabled ads for this one. So if you folks see any ads, let me know. There shouldn't be, uh, maybe when you join the stream, but not like mid time. Enjoy the build. Thanks for stopping by Taylor. I will see you in a few weeks. Um, you will be at Rocky Mountain, won't you? Um, oh, I forget. Yeah. Will you be at Rocky Mountain? Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Error. Anyway, yeah, I should have it disabled now so that you folks shouldn't be getting ads midstream. I don't want folks live here hanging out watching, getting ads. So hopefully that'll work out moving forward. But then VODs, the, the on-demand afterward will have ads so um but yeah should be set up that way now gene where you at baby girl want to come hang out with everybody here she is she was snoozing in the bed underneath the desk donald welcome mensch welcome She's like, why did you wake me from my slumber? She wasn't even sleeping. She was chomming on her toes. A bed slinger lean test, I approve. Yeah. It'll handle it. Thank you for your help, baby girl. Very helpful. Many <laughs> cat butt. <laughs> Oops. Thanks for the help, kiddo. Everybody appreciates it. Headbutts you. Oh, she headbutts me all the time. Not the best angle. Yep. I hope nobody reports that. <laughs> all of our cats do that. We have uh, three cats and all three of them uh, head bump. All of them do head bumps. Damn it. Can we stop doing that? The, the camera's there. Your audience is there. Say hi. God, you are shedding. Oh. But yes, cat head bumps are the best. They are the best. Okay, I gotta get all these cables out of here for the power supply and the LCD. Thank you, very helpful. Power supply and LCD. 
Uh, if you have a rep box or some arms on printables, you can print and attach it to the Prusa enclosure. I do not have a rep box. Brian's in the house. Welcome. One of mine will pop wheelies for petting. That's cute. We have one. We say he meerkats all the time. We call it a meerkat. We, we say uh, he's meerkatting because he'll, he'll set up and like he's looking around like a meerkat, but he's looking for you to pet him. Okay, those are all disconnected. All right, now I get to flip it up and take the power supply off. Flip it up and take off the power supply. Hi, baby girl. You gonna get down? Do you want down or you want help? You want to help, okay. You want to help, got it. She's definitely in here to inspect. She's definitely here to inspect the Prusa quality. She's a, she's a Prusa's American quality inspection department over here. All right, I gotta take these screws off without seeing them. What parts are you waiting on for the Trident? I am waiting on, um, Vitali is working on a nine millimeter gantry, uh, or carriage, nine millimeter carriage for it. And I'm pretty much waiting on that. My kitty went missing last fall. Ah, oh, sorry to hear that. Persia. <laughs> uh, they didn't include enough cat hair in the factory. They absolutely did not. She's here to take care of that. Came for the cat, good. Good. Gene is quickly becoming the star of the show, and I, you know what? I get it. I get it. Can't be mad about that. What the heck? I think this is loose enough. It should just lift up off of here. Oh, wait, is there a screw in the front? Yeah, I forgot. There's two screws in the front. I forgot. God, this thing is dusty already. It's not been here that long. Studio's dustier than I expected. I want. Care for. Kitty stream. Yeah. There. Gotta get the star in the shot, right? Gotta get the star in the shot. Thanks for the help, baby girl. She's uh, my arm support, moral support. All right, now that should come off. Should. Boop, boop. Oh, I'm an idiot. That's, I'm supposed to be removing the original Prusa litter box. Uh, you know what, I got rid of the box. That should have been the Prusa litter box. Sounds like you need air filtration. There is an air filter in the corner of the studio. Actually, right near, funny fa fun fact, there's an air filter. You can see it, uh, that white box over there on the side, directly next to where the Prusa was sitting, is an air filter. I don't know. Right, I'll spin this around and look at the electronics box. I have to remove the cover, then I can get to the screws I need to remove. That was my problem. Or loosen. Where are you going? Yes, everybody can see the printer now. You're very, very helpful. Okay. Power supply is free and clear. Now I can set it on the machine for the moment. Um, I'm actually going to remove it from, I'm going to totally remove it from the machine. Eric, welcome. Go and say hi to people. Of course, you know, she's got a door. Could we not chom on the ground wire? <laughs> not helping. Yeah, it didn't taste good, did it? <laughs> she never chews on wires. 
Never choose on wires except for now. Oh, it's warm in here today. Why oh, it's so warm? Kitty is grounded. <laughs> except on stream. It's just like my uh, my watch. My watch doesn't usually kick in and and respond to my my voice as much as it does on stream. Same thing for the cat. Gonna misbehave on stream. <laughs> Gee. Ridiculous. Ridiculous cat. Alright. Uh, I wanna remove the power supply entirely. She never chews on Voron wires. That's a point. Maybe these uh maybe these Prusa wires are tastier than Voron wires. I hadn't considered that. Take a picture of this. Thank you. Laced with Haribo dust. Haribo, Haribo, yeah. Smell like gummies. European wires can be tastier. I know, what is it, uh, Toyota? Didn't Toyota make, like, PLA coated wire, like the insulation was a, a part PLA or something. It had corns. Corn syrup is one of the products. That's why mice love to chew on Toyotas. I remember when I sold tools, the Toyota folks were always complaining because the, uh, they had a lot of wiring issues, but they had to deal with mice chewing up wiring. I think there was a recall about that. I think there was, yeah. I know I've seen, I've definitely had mice chew on my Toyota. I know I have. Never hiccuped though. Knock on, knock on wood. S edible electronics sounds like a circular economy. Yep. Yeah, I have a Prius as well, and I have absolutely seen evidence of mice chewing on the insulation, uh, like the, the foam insulation under the dash and stuff, and I've seen, like, um, a little bit of wire insulation that they clearly chewed on, but everything in my car still works. One of those, like, I'm not questioning it things. She looked confused about the table being lowered. Not surprised. She's like, where are we going? Why are we doing this? All right. There we go. One little cable here. I don't see where it goes into the electronics box. So I'm just going to disconnect it at the power supply end. Uh, she has a gargoyle face going now. Yep. At least it's, it's not like her brother. Jekyll, uh, our male cat, he, he, we say he gargoyles all the time because he's got this thing when he's bored, he finds something to lay on and he like drapes himself over the edge of it. Like we have a chest freezer, one of the ones that opens from the top. He'll lay on that and just drape his arms over the edge of it. He'll go to the couch on one of the armrests and he'll just drape over one of the armrests his head and chin will hang off the edge and his arms and he'll just kind of like look down like he's a gargoyle. We say he's, it's, he's a little emo boy and he's gargoyling. Okay, one more ground connection here. I've got the um, like quick disconnect um, power supply connection Prusa sent along with this. So I'm disconnecting the power supply entirely because I will be replacing the connections. Aaron, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Emo phase in cats as well. I mean, he's an all black cat, so like he's just in a permanent em emo phase. Uh, aren't Prusa parts PETG? Wouldn't they warp in an enclosure? They have the potential to. Um, the enclosure is rather large volumetrically compared to the size of this machine. I don't expect high temperatures out of this whole setup. I can always, I mean, the parts are available. I can always reprint them. Uh, <clears throat> I can always reprint them in uh, ASA, which I may eventually do just because. Um, power supplies off. 
And I get to remove the screen now. Uh, there's a handful of M3s underneath here. Not a phase, Dad. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a phase. He's just an emo boy. Does the cat uh, like early Fallout Boy? Uh, I don't know. You'd have to ask Ruby. She's the emo one among us. Uh, anti breeze. Yeah, it's more like an anti breeze chamber, less like a like a um, full on temperature enclosure. That kind of makes sense. I mean, realistically, that's mostly what's necessary is keep keeping uh, the breeze down and just letting the temperature rise a little bit. Uh, what's your workflow for recovering threaded inserts from old parts? Um, my workflow for that is I take them, I stick my threaded insert tool, my heat insert tool into them, uh, like the tool I use to install, stick it into there, and then I just heat it up, yank it out. Like I'll, I'll give it a like a turn, like a, a twist, twist, like a, I'll leverage it out with the heat insert tool, and then, um, and then I put them into a separate container. Like, I have a whole container of ones I removed from prints, um, and I rarely use them, but once in a while I do. A cookie cad colored Prusa would be cool. That's a good call. I've been using one of those Creality fabric enclosures for ASA, but it doesn't help. Any uh, workarounds? Uh, careful doing that, it can break the tip of your tool. When they're heated up, it won't. They come, they, they come right out, no problem. I run my soldering iron at like 350 on inserting and removal, so it's way above the temperature it needs to be. Oh, broke yours doing that, your CNC kitchen one doing that. Okay, I'll stick to my cheap Amazon ones for that and use my CNC kitchen ones for installation. Um, but uh, yeah, I haven't had any trouble with that. But I just I don't I don't use them often. Once in a while, I get a hair up my up my rear, and I'll be like, I'm gonna reuse some of the old ones. And then I usually take a pair of uh, flush cuts, and I just pick the old bits of plastic off of them and reuse them. I have some yeah, I have I have a ton of them. Most of the time, I don't bother to recover them. I recover them more so. The primary reason I recover them isn't really to save the inserts. It's because I separate my plastics. Um, I separate my plastics into individual bins of each different material in hopes that someday I will uh, recycle them. Whether or not that will ever happen, I have no idea. I have bins and bins of plastic. Uh, I have never sent it out recycling. It may never happen, but I have it, so I could. Uh, and that's more so why I do it is so I'm not throwing things in those bins knowing that there's metal pieces in them uh, I recover them from all the cra uh, when I have a cracked part and just swap them out over yeah I mean no reason to waste them most of the time I don't use them most of the time I just like grab a fresh new fresh one and I don't want to mess with it but I do save them, so. But I do save them. Um, with the Creality enclosure, I had to I had to put a couple blankets on it to retain the heat. Huh? Interesting. I wonder what kind of bed temps are you running? Like I print ASA at like 105 to 110 on the bed. I know a lot of people run like more like 90, which I think is just silly. Hi, you helping? We gotta take this knob off. Get the knob off. And now I think I can take the screen bezel off. Get it out of here. There we go. Well, I can do that enough to get this out of the way. Came to see the cat. Well, she's here. Uh, that said, ordering 100 for McMaster cars, 20 bucks. I buy them on Amazon. I buy the cheap Amazon ones, and I rarely have a problem with them. The McMaster ones are nicer, but uh, 
The ones I get off of Amazon, honestly, the only problem I have is sometimes they stick onto my uh, insert tool a little bit much. That's probably more my insert tool being a little too large diameter, but I don't know. <clears throat> it doesn't look like she likes the Prusa much. She just likes the attention. That's what she likes. She, she's agnostic about what machines we use. She's printer agnostic. Okay, power supply's off. Screen is off. Fifty for two euro on AliExpress. Nice. Yeah, like a hundred. <coughs> like a hundred of them on Amazon is like eight bucks. Free shipping. All right, where are we at here? Instructions. Remove the power supply. We did that. Uh, it wants us to retie all of these cables underneath. I haven't even opened the box for the for the enclosure yet. I'm purely working off, just working. Hi, kiddo. Thanks. Very helpful. Much help, many cat. Much help, many cat. <laughs> You're so stupid. Honestly, the streams have been a great way to spend some quality time with her. <laughs> Hi, kiddo. Much help, many cat, new channel slogan. <laughs> Get out of the way. Quit showing your butt to everybody. There's a new channel slogan. Quit showing your butt to everybody. The hard part of this is not being able to see what I'm doing. It's always the problem making content, streaming, whatever, not watching, like not being able to see. Oh, you are just out of frame, baby girl. Only felines. <laughs> okay. Cats always want to show the show off the pretty end. They do that. She's sitting pretty right now. I could probably move the camera on the OBS so you could see more. There she is. She's just sitting pretty. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> She's just purring away, falling asleep, standing up. I gotta move this back so I can see the instructions, kiddo. Okay. <sighs> just started printing my first tpu send good vibes all the tpu vibes your way gene is sending them that's what she's doing she's closing her eyes and sending good vibes that's what she's doing right now okay now it's time for the power supply support which means i gotta actually open the box for the kit we're putting together Wish I could rest my head on my neck like that. <laughs> um, I mean, it's probably possible. Just have to have a really big neck. Pre-ordered a polyphemus filament dryer last night. Haven't done anything with my 3D printer since November. I need to get a new filament dryer. I think I'm getting a new one soon. I need a new filament dryer, especially I've got a couple upcoming projects where I could st stand to dry some PETG for them. <laughs> okay. Pop it open the box.
I started designing an open source, uh, I started designing an open source film and dryer like a year ago, over a year ago. And uh, I just never finished the project. I really should. I was gonna run Marlin firmware, have thermal runaway protection, insulation so it could reach higher temperatures than a lot of the ones on the market. But it wouldn't be cheap. You could buy a handful of you know cheap ones for how much it would cost to build the thing. So I was like, eh. And the biggest problem was uh, PTC heater, yep. DLL PDF is working on one, cool. Um, I wonder if a throat microphone would work on a cat. What's the heat source? Yeah, a PTC heater. A 110 volt PTC heater controlled by an SSR. Um, I got like a 700 watt one. So it'd be a pretty hefty power draw unit. It wouldn't have to run that, you know, that all out all the time to, to maintain the temperature, especially once with an insulated chamber. Um, my biggest thing was I wanted to, I wanted to create it as much as anything. Originally my intention was to reuse as many parts of an ender 3 as i could and like build it off of an ender 3 frame and bed heater as the heat source uh maybe use a hot end heater block with a fan blowing across it to add a little more circulating heat and like reuse as much of an ender 3 as i could i started doing that and it just didn't really go the way i wanted so i kind of stopped um the biggest hurdle I hit with it that I didn't get around to, uh, honestly, if it's good enough heat insulation, a 24 volt heater would probably work, especially considering going to sit for hours. You're right, honestly. Uh, could the X-Max 3 work as a filament dryer? Yes, absolutely. Um, if you look, Bamboo Lab has a, they have a, a printable like shroud that you put over top of the spool and then you put the spool on your bed of your printer bed and you put that shroud it's just like a a cover like a freaking bun cake cover um that you put over it and then it traps the heat from your bed to cool to dry your filament within that chamber um they have a whole dryer setting on the bamboo interface for that purpose um I wired my Sunlu filament dryer to my Octopus Pro so I could just control it with Clipper. Cool. Um, the biggest problem that I ran, or one of the biggest hurdles I, I hit with what I was doing uh, when I was designing it and that I kind of stopped is I kept going back and forth. I wanted, part of why I wanted to use uh, like a control board from a Ender 3 was I wanted to have a motor spin the spool. I didn't want the spool to sit static. I wanted it to be able to spin inside because especially with like a PTC heater, if it's heating in one area, it can bake filament in that one area. So it being able to rotate continually would be um, no air movement on the bamboo. Makes sense. Um, I wanted to be able to spin it and that was easy to do. Use just a regular NEMA 17, you know, a couple of printed gears and, and a roller, I could easily make it spin. The hard part was spinning it and then having some type of clutch that could disengage so you could still feed filament from it. Um, I didn't want that to be complicated. I wanted that to be as simple as I could make it. And I just didn't figure that out well enough for my liking and I kind of stopped the project. Um, What's wrong with your old enclosure for the Mark IV? I couldn't see the prints while it was printing. Um, so yeah, uh, that was that was the like hurdle where I kind of like stopped being able to spin it actively while it was just drying, and then being able to feed out of it for a dry box printing, and still have it spin inside of there. I also wanted it to be able to fit either two spools of a kilogram or a single three kilogram spool. Um, I should really revisit that project. I should. This is really taped shut. I wish YouTube notified me when people go live. Well, you're here now. 
Welcome, Zombie Hedgehog. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right. We got Prusha Cheat Cheat. I wish ISP would stop having routing issues. It's so weird what, what like, services and such have issues with, um... Do you have Discord notifications? No. I, I keep debating creating a Discord of my own. Um, I don't have a Discord of my own. I keep, like, debating whether or not I should do it. I've heard one of those one-way 3D printed bearings would work. Yeah. So I could do something like that. A roller uh, sprag type bearing could be doable. Um, a sprag bearing could be doable. It's just, I got to that point and like, I had other stuff I had to move on to anyway. Still got the parts. I should revisit it. Just built a Mark IV last night. Seems decent. Cool. Uh, ba -ba -ba. I don't know. So far, I've liked the Mark IV. Ah. <laughs> so far, I've liked, I've liked the Mark IV a lot more than my Mark III. I was never a fan of my Mark III, um, just wasn't, and the Mark IV has been significantly better than that. Like it immediately, aside from all the cat hair on it now, um, immediately was better in my opinion, in like every way. Oh, there's the zip ties I should be using. There's our Haribo. Anybody want those? Come and get them. Okay, fasteners and accessories. What am I looking for? I'm, I'm looking for the power supply support plate. There's like the support plate that replaces the power supply back here. That's it. There it is. Found it. I'm gonna have a freaking disaster in the studio after this. Found it. This goes, help if I, there we go. Sorry, kiddo, I know. Why are those stuck? There we go. Screws are sticky. You're not helping. Come here. You're not helping. <laughs> Nobody can see anything. <laughs> okay, what size screws do these use? They reuse the originals? Previously removed, yes. Okay. Reuse the originals. She, it's like she knows. She freaking knows. Such a, can I help you? Now she's playing with the screw I just put down. You are starting to be a little, little shit. You know that. She has a strong my, primordial pouch. If you think she has a strong primordial pouch, can she see herself on TV? Yes, she can, but she's not looking at it. The TV's, uh, the TV's right there. Um, if you think she has a strong primordial pouch, her sister, oh my God. Her sister's pouch is like, when she runs, it like swings back and forth. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yes, the potato. The potato. The potato has a hell of a primordial pouch. 
right. We have a cat with swagger like that. Yeah, it's adorable. It is, especially when Zelda runs. When Zelda runs, it really flies and it's, it's adorable. <laughs> Decorative waddle. <laughs> Okay, that support's on. Uh, now it wants me to loom wires. I'm not doing that right now because I need to install the power supply like bracketry. I think I can get this printer out of the way. Now it's telling me to put the mount. Yep, all right, printer can go out of the way now. I'm gonna put the printer back on the shelf for a bit. I just remembered my uh, my 2.4 was heating up. I forgot. <laughs> I just leaned over it and I'm like, wow, that's warm. Why is it warm? Jack, welcome. My my cat's jacked. Yeah, not mine. Not mine. Jekyll's a big cat, but jacked he is not. Uh, I wanted to send the to print load. But yeah, you folks were saying I should do a, uh, a cookie CAD. Somebody said earlier I should do a cookie CAD Prusa Mark IV. I like that idea. They sent uh, they sent out a new spool, uh, a new spool of unicorn and a new spool of the Dark Magic ABS this morning. Um because I want to print a handful more pieces for that and I ran out of filament this week on it. So, on that project. Okay. Back to the instructions. Screen, okay, it wanted me to put the screen together. Oh, there's the obsvot angle. I haven't even opened up the controls for that. Should do that. Forgot. I forgot. I forgot. Just caught up in the 0 0.2 stream again. Uh, and you're live again. Let's go. Awesome. Welcome. Yeah, I'm kind of going overboard with getting uh, getting going on streaming on this channel. Kind of uh, diving in hard. Should be here next week. Awesome. Dark Magic is so sick. It is. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous filament. Uh, that's going to take a moment to load. I, uh, instructions. I already disassembled the screen. Save all the pieces. They go into the new piece. Okay. New pieces. Uh, genuine question. Why would you go for the Prusa enclosure over others? Um, genuine answer. They sent it. <laughs> uh, genuine answer, Prusa sent it. Uh, I do think the build quality of it is, I've seen an assembled one before. This is not, this is my first time building one, but I have seen it fully assembled before. Uh, and the build quality is excellent. Um, so there is that, but realistically, it's because they sent it. I like that the options that it has, I don't have to like design anything to get a filter or uh, lighting or whatever, like there's just add-on accessories. So I do like that. But yeah, that, that's the primary reason. Prusa sent over the Mark IV and the uh, enclosure. They sent them at the same time, I just haven't had time to put the enclosure together. Does it have a chamber heater? No, it does not have a chamber heater. No chamber heater. It does have a chamber filter. How's the trident coming together? I haven't worked on it since the last stream. I'm waiting on pieces. Um, a few pieces. Uh, hopefully Vitali is making a... Um, uh, hopefully Vitali is working on a 9mm carriage plate for me. So I can replace this AliExpress cheapo one that doesn't work properly. And, um, 
What's the other thing? And some more wire loom stuff. So expensive and no chamber heat. Yep. Eh, come on. Unfortunately, no chamber heat, but I, I can understand. Selling chamber heaters. Um, Tor, welcome. Selling chamber heaters is like, oof, that's hard. Just like the problem that we're running into with the Chidi Q1 where everybody's picking apart the way that it's wired and set up. Like, there's so much danger in chamber heaters that it's, it's a liability. Funny enough, uh, the Prusa enclosure costs as much as some uh, aluminum extrusions um, and a uh, and acrylic. Yeah, pretty much. Am I gonna replace the uh, PTG parts? Nope. I'm gonna leave the PTG parts alone and see how it goes. You know, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. They sell it this way, so I'm going to test it out this way. The chamber is, again, it's not actively heated. It's fairly large. It's not super sealed up. I don't expect it to be a um, high temperature enclosure. It's more of a draft shield, a really good draft shield. It's way cheaper to buy extrusions and acrylic. I mean, those can add up fairly quickly, but... Like, I have packs and packs of extrusions around. Um, but they add up, like, you know, quality 2020 extrusions. You're looking at, what? Enough to build a full enclosure. You need not a meter. Error. My brain's farting. It's a premium option, totally. Where do you buy extrusions? Uh, a mix and match of places. Primarily, I, I mean, I get some from open builds. I've got a handful from open builds in the past. Open builds, random Amazon sellers, direct from Masumi. That's pretty much it. And in kits. This is a bit much, uh, this is a bit more than just a box to put your parts in. Totally. This is like, in, it is intended and, um, it is definitely more thought out and intended that for this machine than just a box. Here we go. So there's mounting for the dedicated power supply for this. There's a disconnect for the power supply for it. There's... A uh, quick disconnect so I can like pull the machine out to work on it serviceability wise. Mounts the power supply outside of the frame for cooling. Um, there's an add on light system that has a mounting location and pieces. Joseph Prusich's personal channel. Is that actually a personal channel? It's a weird name. Hello, how's it going? It's going. Getting to work on it. So, there is more to it than just that. Chicago, Chicago area is lucky. We have pickup available from Asumi and McMaster. That's sick. Uh, I can pick up from McMaster and Jersey. I don't. If I order something from McMaster and Jersey, it comes the next day. And it's like two days from Chicago. Uh, but not Masumi. What's your opinion on the performance of Stealth Burner versus Mini Stealth Burner versus others like the Prusa? Uh, it really depends on what you're trying to do with it, honestly. Um, so like my, where am I at here? Screen. I was setting up my profile and did not realize it would look stupid in chats. It is me. Okay, welcome Joe. Um, Where was I headed? Error. I missed a chat. What was I, what was I trying to answer? 
Ziltek. Error, error, error. Welcome. Uh, oh, Stealth Burner versus other extruders. It's, it really depends on your purpose and your need. Each one has its own different pros and cons. Like, the part cooling on a Stealth Burner kind of sucks. But if you're only printing ABS and ASA on a regular basis, that doesn't matter. Um, I haven't really, I've only really printed ASA so far with the Mark IV and a tiny bit of TPU. And in both situations, uh, part cooling has not been an issue. So I haven't tried it PLA yet to, to test that function of this thing. All right. This leaned out of here so I can put this in. Jekyll. One of the other cats just showed up. My dog's watching and you, uh, is watching your cat and crying at the screen. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Uh, I think this, which size screw do I use for this? Dog and cat just wandered in. M3 by eight for the grounding screw. Now you have to say nice things about the enclosure because he's here. Yeah, well, I do not have to. I don't have to. Be nice to. Another stream at the right time. Welcome RH3D. Welcome, welcome. Okay, what holds these in? Is M3 by 10s or M3 by 8? I guess it's M3 by 8. I always get confused and forget that the uh, that there's more than one photo under each caption line on on the Prusa instructions. I always forget that. You getting down? You gonna get down? I, I kind of need stuff that's behind you, so make a decision. Can you use an X1C without Wi-Fi? It can be used without Wi-Fi. It can be used in LAN mode. Or wait, you can load stuff onto the SD card and take it to the printer. It's kind of a pain, but it can be done. Um, without Wi-Fi though, entirely? I'm pretty sure if you put it into LAN mode, it will not reach out to the cloud. And, and then you can only load stuff via SD card. Like to see what Prusik can come up with a filament dry for a filament dryer. That's a good call. We were talking filament dryers earlier, Joe. That would be interesting to see what they could come up with. Uh, anyone else hyped for MMU three and uh, for the Mark IV? You can't use a slicer that way. We well, could load off. Um, you could load off. You can export G code from the slicer. You don't have to send G code over the cloud. Okay, brackets are on. Boop. Brackets are on the screen, and these get set aside for the moment. Don't need them right now. These are the old ones. Or are these the ones that mount? I don't freaking know. I'm probably crossing things up a little bit much here. Jekyll, what you doing, dude? Oh, it's Haribo time. Not for me. Moving on. Next. Instructions. Next. This thing, this needs to be a little over. There we go. All right, time to start frame assembly. Uh, they probably print the spool in a matter of hours. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's like my ASA needs around here. People are always like, oh, don't you use? Um, there is a dry box for the HT90, but rather pricey. Um, that's like my needs. People are always like, oh, doesn't all that filament get wet hanging out in your studio? To which I say, I print it so much, it really doesn't become a problem. Uh, not really a problem for me. All right. 
We got short and long extrusions. Oh, you're done. She's like, I don't know what's going on, but I don't like it. I'm out. Go on. Go. Gene, go. Or don't. Okay. Short, long, short, long. Go ahead. Jean, come here. She wants down. Go. Get rid of the cat hair for now. Uh, when will the Prusa Mini get an upgrade like an extruder? That's a good call. Scary noise or attention? I'm not sure which it was. I think her brother was just in here, the other cat, one of the other cats. And then he wandered out. I think she might be going after him to go eat food. She's like, no, don't you eat the food. I want it. She's not going to stick around if there's no wires to chew on. That's that's fair. All right, I need M4 by 5 screws now. Bloop. Where'd I put the hardware box? I think this is it. Uh, nope. Uh, that's rivets. Nylon rivets. What are those for? I guess I didn't read the instructions well enough. Oh, okay. Here we go. Fasteners. Um, four by five. There we go. Or, yeah, four by five. Four by five, 55 pieces of them. Second, I thought my print was peeling off the bed. I'm just not used to seeing tall layer heights like that. Got the optional power supply mount for the lighting and fan mounting setup, printing on the 2.4. Uh, back to the instructions. Okay. Instructions. Protect the work surface. Nah. Place profiles like this. Okay. Logo, logo away from each other. Um, short, long, short, long. There's a picture going around of a guy that had a large trash can full of bamboo poop. Yeah, I saw that one. Like a full trash can worth. Why are the hexagons on the back of the frame look cooler on the front? Touche. I'm assuming because they're the less necessarily uh, mechanically sound, like machined flat surface, would be my guess. Join both profiles, two screws. I forgot. I, I was warned that there's a lot of screws putting this together, so. I charged up my never used electric screwdriver. The electric screwdriver I don't use much anymore. Boom. Same procedure for the other side. Cool. I can do that. Second verse, same as the first. Second verse, same as the first. Announcement of Prusa working with precious plastic is great. I'm hoping to see more sustainability efforts in 3D printing. As do I. As I said, I save. I save like all of my filament, my scraps and like failed prints and all kinds of stuff. And it's starting to get a little ridiculous. And Ruby brought up the idea of us moving today. I was like, oh, great. Um, not at all opposed to the idea, but I'm like thinking about all these things that I would have to move with me. And I'm like, yay. Yay. So, we'll see. We'll see. All right. This feels like German engineering. 
really moving after building. Oh, yeah, that was. Moving would mean new studio. Yes, I mean like out of state, out of city, out of state, whole nine yards. So. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, oh, yay, builds out space to work. Let's move, pretty much. Figures, get the, fig get the studio all finished, then move. Yeah, pretty much. I don't know what I should say too much at this point. It's only an idea at the moment, but an idea that's pretty uh, up there, you know? You know, you know? All right. Do I have to square these up or anything? Doesn't really seem like it. Out west, yeah. Out west. Do you own or rent? We rent. This is a rental. This is not a wow stick. It's some Amazon special, nothing special. But honestly, it works great. Ifu. Ifu. Uh, moving for networking, cost of living, her dad. Um, I still have the instructions up. Yep. Yeah. All right. Um, my father-in-law. She wants to move closer to my father-in-law. I mean, it really felt like it didn't need to be squared. I, there is the slightest bit of slop, but I was able to adjust it. I kind of just adjusted it so edges were flat up against each other, and it seems like it should be good. She wants to be closer to her, uh, her dad, my father-in-law, so. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Where was I at? Error. Oh, that's what I was going to do. I was going to look up the screwdriver. It's like $25 when I bought it. Probably up in price now. There it is. Eh, not that much. 30 bucks. Drop it in chat. Boop. That's the screwdriver. It's not the strongest thing by any means, but for just running screws in like that, it's great. For just running screws in like that, it's great. All right, assembling the base frame, feet. Get the feet out of the box here. Right. Now I need some M3 screws. Got a wow, got a name brand wow stick, and I'm not impressed with the torque out of it. Yeah, this thing is like not. It has no torque. But honestly, I don't want it. For, I don't care about that. If I need torque, I'm going to use the LTT screwdriver or a hex wrench. So These packages feel like Haribo packages that the hardware comes in. I keep getting faked out by them. I touch them. All right. Recessing some nuts into here. Bloop. Nuts into the feet. It'd be great if you could order a Mark IV kit with like PC Blend CF printed parts instead of PETG Ultimate Mark IV. I don't know if PC CF is the right choice for all parts. ASA, ABS, maybe, don't know. I know like, I know some folks have found that PC, I believe, kind of creeps more of an ABS and ASA does over time. So that's why it's not really recommended to print your motion system parts on a Voron with PC. Only thing I've ever used PC for on a Voron was my 
This was printed in PCCF. Or is it PACF? Oh, nylon definitely gives too much. I forget if this is piece. I think this is nylon, actually, now that I think about it. This is PACF. The uh, hot end housing for my Rapido. I'm thinking wrong. Alright. Take the feet and back and orient them underneath. Alright. So these go under here. But I know at least one of the cables, two of the corners, I think, the cables for the fan, power supply, and the um, light go through. So I gotta pull up that section of the instructions real quick. I gotta refer to that page. Go to the filter one and look in there. PA will creep, PC may crack. None of them is recommended by Voron because of that. Makes sense. Curious how much bigger this will be than a Core XY like the Trident or the 2.4. When you say out west, is that Seattle area? No, but yes. Uh, I, I guess I can say it's just whatever. It's, it's not decided yet. It's only a, a, a floated out. I do have the filter for the enclosure. Yeah, that's why I'm looking to see if uh, where, which feet I need to run the wires for the filter through. Um, it's Portland. Portland's where we're looking. So. All right, there's the filter housing and the filter. Here's the power supply and basic board for that. Oh, sorry, Jean. She wandered back in as under my feet. Okay. Uh, the mount for this is printing right now, so I can't do that. I sometimes use PC ABS blend for motion and tool head parts. That makes a little more sense. I've never had luck with uh, PC ABS personally. It's noticeably stiffer than AB ASA and ABS. Okay. The optional mount for this piece is actually printing on my Volon right now, so I can't do that yet, but I just need to know where this cable runs through. won't be using the provided parts the I am using the provided parts um, like the, everything for this is included except for the mount for this power supply is an optional print because you can just sit next to the thing it doesn't have to it doesn't have to be mounted that's like I think that's the only optional part I need to print which is why it's printing I can only print small parts with it, it warps like crazy what brand is it you you've been using the PC ABS Got this little board that controls the lighting and the um, fan filter, the fan for the filter. Wow. Guide the external power supply cable through Got my roll of Cookie Cad Dark Magic ABS, and the shiz is gorgeous. Love to hear that. Working on your 0 0.2 conversion. Awesome. For PC, run your bed at 120C and it won't warp. Yeah, I've usually tried like 110, 115, so maybe I should bump temp up more. Okay, so it's the corner where the power supply is going to be. So the left rear corner. 
Isn't it the left rear or the right rear? No, it's left rear. Okay. Guide the PSU cable through the hole. Then the foot goes on. Okay. A little. Schedule it with support and you could get a tour. Cool. All right. Does this cable slide in here once it's, oh yeah, it does. I can pull it. Okay, cool. I was just worried that I was gonna like lock this in and screw myself up. Oh, I got that backwards. No, I don't. It's not backwards. Someone say tour. I did not, but welcome. But uh, always, always appreciate hearing from you. But no, didn't say. This cable keeps coming out of here while I'm trying to set it down in here. There we go. Okay. Okay, I get it now. I was really confused. I'm like, where does this power supply cable go? It goes in from the back and out the front to the control box. Understood. Confusing the heck out of myself. Okay, M3 by 12 screws for these feet. Not these ones. Three by 12. They're not the right ones. Might not be. There's a couple in there, but whatever. Tor! Oh yeah, yeah, Tor. T-O-U-R, not your name. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I see where you I see where you got that. I see where you got that. Alright, three by four. Three by twelve. Three by twelve. Did I get the OBSBOT camera up and working yet? It takes a little bit to connect sometimes, unfortunately. Go. Off to get some sleep. Thanks for stopping by, Joseph. We appreciate it. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, will we see you at Rocky Mountain, Joe? I assume not, but I figure I ask. I know the team's gonna be there. I wasn't sure if you'd be making an appearance. more feet on here so this thing's not just sitting on the floor or floor on the table so much no rocky mountain okay that's what i figured that's what I figured. Well, we will catch you at the next event. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> Who in chat's gonna be at Rocky Mountain? I know, Zombie Hedgehog, you're gonna go. Ballistic, you're not gonna make it to Rocky Mountain, are you? I know Adam Vector 3D is coming now. Nero Steve, Tor is going to make it. Yeah. 
Aaron Ro uh, Andrew Rogers, you'll be there. I wish in spirit. Sounds fun. Should be a good time. I don't know. I haven't been yet. Be my first time attending, so I don't really know. Seems like a good event. I'm hoping it's going to be a good time. I'll be hanging out at the Fabrico booth. Most, uh, well, not most, but a fair bit of the time I know I'll be hanging out at the Fabrico booth, hanging out and meeting people. Wrong continent, yeah. Missed the inaugural last year, but did uh, Midwest, yeah. Thanks for uploading the Mercury files. Yeah, no problem. If anybody's not aware, I uploaded the Mercury 1.1 files yesterday. Pretty much every, I'm pretty sure everything that I designed for the Mercury 1.1 has been released now, so. Wonder if Nero will have a suit. Uh, it depends if he has to fly or drive. I'd imagine he'll fly. It's pretty far for him. I mean, I know I'm flying, so. Uh, is there an RRF on the East Coast? Um, there's formerly Earth. It's formerly known as Earth. Now it's 3D Printopia. Uh, that's in Maryland, outside of Baltimore. 3D Printopia, formerly known as Earth. East Coast Rep Rap Fest. Why are you not connecting? You're right there. I'm not sure how I feel about the name change. Yeah, me either. The OBSBOT camera is like here and working, but I can't control it right now. The software is being a little funky. Not this year. All right, well, we'll see you at uh, 3D Printopia anyway, I would assume. Okay, I got those in place. The part that's gonna hold this all together is printing right now, so that's gotta wait. All right, uh, now I can go back to the instructions, the mainline instructions. Back to the instructions. Did I reload? Assembling the frame, feet. Stickies for the feet now. 3D Printopia is going to be a good show. It'll be a good show. I don't know how I feel about the name change, but it'll be a good show. Earth is always a good show. So I have high hopes for the new name, I guess. Got these little like furniture pad feety dealies on here. Where are the rest? There's six. There we go. Comes with a couple extra. Peel a sticky off of here. I'll flip this thing back over so I can uh, stick these on here pretty easy. Uh, I understand the sentiment that little about RRFs revolve around RepRap anymore and trying to explain RepRap to people to get them interested is a lot. I get it. I definitely get it. Uh, Earthtopia is the same weekend as your wife and daughter's birthdays. Oof, that's a hard one. Yeah, no, I, I definitely get the fact that... Uh, Rep rap is a, a nebulous concept to the masses. Trying to appeal to a wider audience. I totally get that. I do. put the bottom panel in. Yep, bottom panel. Adorable little footsies on this thing. They're little, but there's two at each corner, so should get the job done just fine. I 
I get changing name, but the new name is very meh. Yeah. I'm tired of wasting filament on calibration. Why can't plastic just melt correctly? Welcome to 3D printing. <laughs> and then you calibrate something in, and then out of nowhere, for some odd reason, that calibration no longer works. And you can't explain it, but you gotta recalibrate. Recalibrating. Recalibrating. What are you doing, kiddo? Jean's at my feet, just curled up. But she's... I don't know what she's doing. I don't know what she's doing. Alright, bottom panel time. Bottom panel on a box. So it stands up a little bit. I can do that. I even have a Prusa box to do it with. What are you printing on, a Vor on the Voron? Uh, the Voron is currently printing the mount for uh, this external power supply that mounts to the side of here. The kit doesn't come with the printed part for this. It's optional because you don't need it. But uh, I'm printing the mount for it right now. It's like the only printed part with this whole setup. It doesn't come with it. Okay, I got to find the panel. I assume it's in here. Clear plastic sheets. Is it in the clear plastic sheets container package? That would not make sense, but found a small chamber heater you might like for this enclosure. Okay. Zero G in the house. What speeds do you run your 2.4 at? It varies wildly. Like it's all over the place. Um, Right now it's printing pretty slow because there's a lot of really steep overhangs on this design. The way they designed this part is a little funky. Uh, so it's got a lot of overhang on it. Nope, this, the bottom panel's not in here. Okay, uh, so it's printing pretty slow. It's also printing 0.28 millimeter layer heights. Sensing on Discord, thanks. Um, it's also printing 0.2 millimeter, 0.28 millimeter layer heights. So a lot of uh, taller. Uh, a lot of flow. Generally, I print anywhere between 300, three, uh, at the top, 300, 350 on infill almost exclusively. 200 on inner perimeters and like 125 on outer perimeters, but that's like bigger designs. Lately, I've been printing a lot of small stuff and I really slow down for the small stuff to maximize layer times. So it really varies a lot. I, I change from one print to the next depending on how long it's going to take. Like if it's going to, if a print's going to finish in the middle of the night, there's no reason for me to print it fast. I might as well print it slow and have it done when I wake up the next morning and have a really solid quality out of it. Um, not that it can't print good quality at higher speeds, but like less risk. Where the heck is the bottom panel? I'm gonna pull all these extrusion thingies out of here. Short, short. Not extrusions, but like sheet metal corners. these out of the way it's like door pieces uh, I ask because I just bu built a 2.4 and coming from your CR 10 it's flying you could use dynamic overhang speed. I do use dynamic overhang speed, but it doesn't work well enough in my opinion. The problem with dynamic overhang speed is it doesn't account for layer time, for one. 
Uh, not a lot. Yeah, unfortunately, you can't share links in the in the chat. Um, wait, I can probably. Let me see if I can do something real quick. All right. Zero G, you're now a moderator. You should be able to post links. Um, yeah, I just made Zero G a moderator so he can post links. Should be able to. Um... The dynamic overhang speed setting only slows down exactly where the overhang is. So like if your parts like this, it won't slow down coming into the to the overhang, it only slows down right at the overhang. It really needs like an area of effect. And I said that to Orca Slicer Dev Soft Fever. Um and I said that to to the Soft Fever and like there is a setting um, in Orca Slicer to make it affect layers interior of just the exterior one, but it's 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 not the same. It's it's weird. Um, so I I I end up manually slowing down everything, or using height range modifiers where the overhang is going to be and slowing down just that area. Just this design has a ton of overhang on like the whole print, so there really wasn't a point. Um, it's hard to explain. I think that 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 slowdown needs me to it needs to be able to define like millimeters away from the overhang how much that area is affected. Like you should be able to say slow down within five millimeters of an overhang. I think to make it function the way that it really should. In my opinion. It helps, don't get me wrong, it does, but it needs a little more, I think. Okay, I got foam. Power supply mount bracket. There it is. The bottom panel is in the very bottom of the box. <laughs> the very bottom of the box. Stock values don't do much. I have them tuned down quite a bit, but did you print the handles to move the uh, enclosure it's a mod? I haven't done that yet because I'm printing parts in black right now and I want to print those in orange. So no, I have not yet. Okay this out of the way bottom panel uh, with the notch with this big V notch facing the V cut is in the front the L cut out on the right I'm confused The V cutout must be facing against the base. That's so confusing. Oh, I think I might have put these in the wrong fucking direction. I think I put these on the wrong direction. Damn it. I didn't pay enough attention. I don't think I paid enough attention. I failed this class. There's a setting to slow down all perimeters and overhang layer, but that slows down things significantly. I'm unfamiliar with that setting. The enclosure kit does come with Haribos, only a little baggy of them, but it does. Uh, I think I put these feet in the wrong spot. That's my bad. Where should I have gone with them? I think they should be here and there. Oh wait, no, I'm looking at this wrong, I think. I think I'm looking at this wrong. Okay, I might have done okay. All right, secure the bottom with M4 by three screws. All right, three by, M3 by four. Can't afford to pay attention. Yeah. 
I mean, it's just the issue is is whether or not I put the uh, the feet on the wrong spot, which not a big deal. They're easy to move. I outsmarted myself trying to get that done before I put the bottom panel in. I should have I should have put the bottom panel in before I did that, so I had a better idea of where everything is like registered. And three by four. There they are. Fuzzy Tomato Head, what'd you miss? You missed me putting the feet on wrong. You missed Joseph Prusha stopping by to chat with us. And uh, that's about it. That's what you missed. And lots of lovely chat. But. And Jean. A lot of lovely Jean in the, in the mix. She's snoozing right now, I think. I think she's snoozing. Prusha himself, yep. Christopher Sexton, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, a whole bunch of screws to uh, put in this bottom panel. 14 M three by four screws. Yay. That's all, just 14. That's all. At least one of his body doubles, yeah. Who knows? I was very, bearded bucket in the house, welcome. I was definitely thrown off by his account name being Joseph Prusha personal page <laughs> channel. <laughs> that really, that looked awfully fake to me. That's where I was like, uh, okay, sure. Sure, it's Joseph. <coughs> uh, printing parts printing parts with an overhang and it drives you nuts that the 40 that the fan doesn't ramp up before it gets to that that's kind of part of what i'm talking about i feel like like the overhang needs to start millimeters before that print you know it's only you that makes a sound when changing scenes okay well hey you know I should just record some of the sound of like me making sound effects into the microphone and just play them, like set them up to actually play. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm special, okay? <laughs> All right, I can tighten these now. Oh, that one's not doing anything. Eric, gotta bounce. All right, thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. It's fun though. I have fun with it, I guess. Overhang cooling can ruin a print with ABS and ASA. I run ABS and ASA on a continual basis. It's almost all I print and I've never had trouble with it. I mean, you can adjust it for your individual materials, so. Uh, since you're now officially coming to Rocky Mountain, any last minute projects or you're just gonna enjoy it? Enjoy. No last minute projects, nope. Channels from 2015, so huh? I, I believe it was actually Joseph. Actually, uh, I didn't expect him to come to Rocky Mountain, so that was it. That was the answer I expected. So, um, and the information he was sharing. But where was I at? Um, yes, I actually intend to enjoy Rocky Mountain. Thank you. Yes, I do. Uh, I'm gonna be hanging out at the Fabrico booth, but that's just like hang out and chit chat. To my knowledge, we're not building anything or doing anything. I did not commit to that. So, damn it, I just dropped the bit. 
Have I ever encountered frequent clogging with printing ASA? Not in the least. Are you running a Teflon lined hot end? The bit just fell into a freaking box of a uh, hardware. Uh, any sources for dual color or gradient ABS and ASA besides the two options from Cookie Cat? Um, there's a rainbow ABS I'm aware of. I've got a spool of it down there. Strong Hero 3D. Strong Hero 3D Rainbow ABS. Uh, it's like dark rainbow. It's not it doesn't have like super vibrant light colors in it, but my Prusa Mark IV is not happy with it. Really, I printed a. I've only printed a ASA on the Mark IV so far. Interesting. Yeah, sorry, I uh, I don't have a good answer to that. I've not had a problem. RH3D beat me to it. I missed. I missed what they said. Yeah, there is fan speed adjustment within um, Orca Slicer for like overhangs or layer time, and I, I don't run a ton of fan, but I'll run on Polymaker ASA on a stealth burner on my 2.4. I'll run upwards of 60% part cooling on ASA. Like, I want to cool my overhangs. I don't run into layer adhesion issues. I find Polymaker ASA is quite forgiving of, um, of cooling. And honestly wants it, in my experience. Not a ton, like generally like 20, 25% throughout the print. And then 15 to 75%, depending on the extremeness of the overhang. That's what I find. Tighten all of these up before I flip this over. Uh, Polymaker filament in general is quite forgiving and cooling. I find that to be quite accurate. I find that to be accurate. Depends on geometry and layer times, totally. When printing ABS and ASA, do you have fans on low or uh, completely off? I have it on low at all times. Like right now, my part cooling fan's probably running at 15 to 25%, I don't remember which. Um, so, yeah. So, low. Hmm. Okay. Did I miss a super chat? Oh shit, I did, I'm sorry. I totally missed two super chats. BP sent a super chat early on before Andrew Rogers. So sorry I missed that. And Zombie Hedgehog sent the, the banana. Um, thank you so much. Uh, sorry I missed those, folks. Completely spaced. That's what I get for working on this thing and paying attention to it. Sorry. Uh, thank you to BP and Zombie Hedgehog. And Andrew Rogers, who also sent one. But I did acknowledge that one. I know that. Yeah, let me look at my uh, slicer right now. Or on a uh, mainsail right now. Yep, 25% part cooling right now. And my enclosure temperature right now on that machine with the thermistor that's mounted to the back gantry is at 47.8 degrees. So 
Not cooking by any means. Not cooking by any means. Open Obsbot software again. That's driving me nuts. I want to. I want to use that angle. CAD drops for G2E. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. I want to double check some things. Um, the MDPCX sleeving heat shrink. Uh, what sizes do I generally use? I placed an order for more today. I usually use the small, medium, and large, honestly. Um, but I also ordered some micro. I think that's what I ordered today. Micro, small, medium, and large. So... Realistically, I really use the small and medium most. Uh, the others are kind of overkill for a lot of my needs, but I just wanted to have them in case I wanted to do like a larger bundle of cables or something like that. Yeah, the camera's just not kicking in. All right. Oh, well. Draft is a big big deal, more so. Agreed. Enclosure temp for my printer is currently 73. No offense. No offense whatsoever. I really question a lot of people's chamber temperature readings. Is your thermistor all the way at the top of your chamber? Like, I get so many people who are like, oh yeah, I get like 70 without a heater. And I'm like, I've never seen 70 on any machine. Like, I haven't seen that high of a temperature on a Voron Zero with a tiny little chamber. I don't know. Um, the Commando Green might be oh, work well for your build. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it could work out really well for your build. I, um, separate thermistor at the bottom. 73 at the bottom without a chamber heater. I'm blown away by that. Um... Uh, missed a question back there. How long did you spend trying to find parts when sourcing your first 2.4? I'm currently, as in while watching this, getting a spreadsheet of parts together. Too long. Way too long. I don't remember. I did it over a span of months. And it's part of why I recommend buying kits and not self-sourcing. It has two, in two inches of insulation around the entire thing. Okay, that, that, that helps a lot more. <laughs> That makes more sense. It still still seems awful high to me, but but that makes way more sense. Um, yeah, that does. Uh, that's part of why I recommend kits, honestly, at this point, is like you spend so much time self-sourcing individual parts, then you end up paying shipping on individual transactions, trying to get the press prices everywhere, or tax on individual transactions, and it adds up so much. I don't know. I think uh, you folks have me convinced. I do think I'm gonna add um, fans to, uh, bed fans to the Trident build. I wasn't originally, but I think I'm going to. Any builds I recommend for a newbie starting out? Honestly, a Voron Zero is the easiest thing. Uh, oh, well, and Ballistic coming in there at the price, too. My my Zero, my Boron Zero, and my 2.4 were both expensive. Like, they were more expensive than LDO kits by a, by a long shot. I think my... I want to say my Zero was over $1,000. I get upper 50s with an insulated cover on my X1C, low, high 40s, 50s without. Yeah, my, my insulated X1C, I get, like, 50 Slightly lower prices, I can choose my MCU and all that. I, I mean, I totally understand. Uh, same site in the same order. That's a big help. That is a big help. So, um, reasonable. Yeah, I, I have no idea how long it took me. Too long. I'm sure of that. Okay, bottom panel is in. Anti-slip dampers go in now. Oh, okay, so there's the printed parts that go into them. I saw those here somewhere. Probably put them back there. Yep. There they are. Are these the dampers? Nope. Oh, that's the temperature readout. You can in use individual parts kits. That's a good one. Yep. 
Double 8025 fan mod that Fabrico shows off. Looks better and quieter than the 5015. Yeah, I think what I'm gonna do. Uh, I've got a pair of these 60, uh, 6015s. Um, collecting dust. I got a pair of these 6015s. I think I'm gonna use these for bed for the bed fans. I could probably run these at like 75% speed. They'll be like decently quiet and I don't need focused air. You know, they got this wide opening on them. I can just let it chuck air around inside of a chamber. And I don't really have a purpose for these otherwise. I've got a pair of them. So I think these are what I'm gonna use for the, the uh, trident. One on each side, just blowing out each toward each side, I think is my intention. Self store starts to make sense if you're deviating a lot from from a kit. Totally reasonable. Um, also, like the other guy planning to build a Boron, I only have a Neptune 4 Max. Woo! Fun. Um, like, honestly, you know, my, my Trident build, the fact that the Trident build is an LDO kit is kind of ridiculous. Um, thank you, Jason, for providing the kit for that build, but like, there's very few things that are actually going to be from the kit in the final build. The frame, the bed, the motors, not even the motors, the Z-axis motors, only the Z-axis motors, the extruder motor and the X, Y, A, B motors are not from the kit. Yeah, so. I'm gonna use the parts from the kit though. I'll use some of the pulleys and stuff to rebuild my 2.4 when I rebuild that. So, not going to waste. It's not going to waste. All right, these little damper feet thingies go in the bottom. You also mod everything, yeah. Uh, what changes did I want to make to G2E? Um, I wanted to try and create a little bit more movement in the pivot mechanism. Honestly, the biggest thing I wanted G2E CAD for was I made a, I had to make two things I had to make. I had to make my own PG7 mount, so a mount for the cable gland uh, for my umbilical. I was able to do that just based off of the motor and I actually measured the clocking of the motor and like I was able to custom do that. I got that done. I actually got, I was able to get both things I really wanted to get done that CAD would have made my life infinitely easier for. Um, the other thing was the door. So I have a hex panel or a, a hex door design for the SBB 2209 uh, can board for the stealth burner with the clockwork too. I, mo I remixed my own design to work with G2E. I just haven't released it yet. I don't think I released it. I don't think I released it. Did I? Um, I don't remember. I think I, well, maybe I did. Let's look at my thangs page and find out. Ba, 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 ba. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I released the Galileo to uh, PG7 mount, but I didn't release the hex door. I can double check that against the CAD now. It fit my machine, but I might clean it up against the CAD now that the CAD's out. Uh, and and then release that too. I also released all the Mercury One files, if anybody hasn't seen those yet. Uh, released all those yesterday for a free download. Please consider downloading them. It really helps me out. All right, back to the instructions. Okay, these damper things get these little printed inserts into them. Do these just screw in? Damper things get inserts. Oh, uh, okay, I see what happens here. Then they fit over, they fit over threaded spots in the frame. If you didn't please release it, uh, maybe a link to the G2E stuff. Yeah, or what G2E stuff. 
could use that file here soon. Cool, I'll get to releasing it then. I will, uh, I'll clean that up and get it released. Um, G2E, Galileo 2. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, ba -ba -ba -ba. It's currently in beta release still. Eight hours ago, G2E step file. Okay, cool. They did release. Rad. Thank you for informing me of that. I will get that. Check my remix against it. Because there was like minor tweaks. I had to print like a dozen of the door till I got it right because I was working off of... Because I didn't... I couldn't work off of CAD. So... It's a an extruder assembly. It, I just dropped it in chat. It's the Galileo... Galileo 2 extruder. G2E. Galileo 2 extruder. Alright, these little footsies standoff thingies can go in here now. This should be back here, I think. Alright. LDO seems to have a CAN bus board under the same name. No. LDO has a, uh, they have the Nighthawk board coming. It's not CAN, it's, uh, I mean, LDO makes the Galileo 2 extruder kits. So there's that. Okay, so these fit, place the anti-slip damper on the thread hole. M2 by 20s. This is confusing. Locate the threaded holes in the front and two in the back. Okay, that's the front where the cable goes through. Got it. I definitely put the power supply on the wrong, wrong side. <laughs> oh, they just had a, gal uh, a CAN bus board as part of the instruction or the uh, listing got it okay so this goes this way bloop 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 and bloop all right m3 by 20s into the into these i'll see m3 by 20s M320. Okay, that's in the right spot. Those are the rivets, magnets, screws. M320. Oh, those are M320 pins. <laughs> Doe. So these are for the hinges. Doe. Uh, oh. Are the M320 screws just floating in here? That's weird. That's weird. The screws are just like floating in this bag. Sure. fully understand what these do. I thought maybe the machine mounted to them, but that's clearly not what they do. I guess they, they just sit to the side of the frame to like keep it located. I guess. Okay. I'm gonna grab oh, I'm gonna grab a cable quick. plug this in while I'm not using it so it continues to charge. I don't think it needs to right now, but it's not going to hurt. Plus it charges through USB-C. 
Okay, I need to move the power supply for the fan stuff. I put it in the wrong corner. Dope. I put it in the wrong spot. It's gotta go back here. So, I put it across the front when it should have been down the side. Dope. The screws are in the top. <laughs> uh, hit, bring the box back. Okay. Here's the way it needs to be, but it's not. It's across here now. It needs to run down this side. Gotta run, all right, have a, have a good one. Thanks for stopping by, Bearded Bucket. Catch you later. Thank you for being here. Okay. Okay. There's that, cable's free. All right. Uh, any more streams lined up for the week? I don't have a schedule set at the moment. I will probably stream again Wednesday. Um, I'd imagine working on the uh, 0.2 build unless parts show up for the Trident. So I think I'll be streaming the 0.2 build on Wednesday. Probably mid-afternoon. So as not to interfere with Daniel's evening stream. Or when does Daniel stream? He streams in the afternoon, doesn't he? So maybe evening then. I gotta I gotta like write down and remember everybody's stream schedules. I'm trying to get these projects done with so I can move on to some other stuff, but I also gotta run, alright. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it. See you uh, Wednesday, most likely. I don't know how much longer I can go. I'm starting to get hungry, and I think Ruby will be home not too distant future to do that D-I-N-N-E-R thing. The dog's at my feet, so I can't say the word. <laughs> the dog's at my feet, so I can't say that word. Okay. Now this foot can go back on. Would have helped if I got this right the first time. Would have helped. Actually, as I say that, the rate this is going, I'll probably stream this again tomorrow and finish putting this together tomorrow. I don't see finishing it in a single stream. We'll see how far we get here, but. I think it's going to start to roll here because I'm kind of getting through the parts where I just was confused by some stuff. Should start to roll now, but we'll find out. Okay. Now the feet are on and the cable is run the way it's supposed to be run. Now that's right. Tighten the feet down a little bit. Make sure they're good and tight. Good and tight. German engineering, good and tight. I guess check engineering. Okay, now it's frame time. Short profiles. Four short profiles go in each corner and we build up. I can do that. I know a guy who, does, who did that before.
That's the wrong screw. That's an M3. Ay, yeah, yeah. I'm mixing up my screws. Here we go. Four by fives. They have, they use this. They both use M2.5. So I'm like, it fit the hex bit. That's got to be the right size. No, it's not. That's not how that works. Oh, if I could only have one printer for the rest of my life, what would I pick? Currently, my 2.4. Currently, my Boron 2.4. Good mix of build volume, printing capability, quality capability, speed, materials, all that. That'd be my current choice. How's it looking? It's looking. Is going. I wish it had gone a little faster, but we're getting there. I'm starting to see what everybody says about so many screws. It's a lot of screws. This is some seriously well-engineered stuff, though. Like, when they could have just come out with a... So Prusa still hasn't made a mini enclosure. Why even use a Prusa anymore? Damn it, I got that one outside. Wonder if the Trident will change that. We'll find out. I don't think so. I'm really looking forward to the Trident, but I don't think the Trident's gonna surmount my 2.4 in my day-to-day -day printing uh, because the way it's designed, it kind of has to print faster. The way I'm intending it, it should have to print faster. So, mm. um, why use a Prusa? anymore support you know a lot of companies you have a hell of a time getting through to any support people with prusa they've got 24 hour support service a lot of companies barely have an email address um proven reliability like there's tons of print farms running prusas all day every day for long periods of time and honestly, I've been impressed by the Mark IV so far. I don't have enough time on it to really give a full impression, but like out of the box impression, it's been a big improvement over the Mark III in my opinion. Actual quality control. Next extruder is cool. Yeah, I haven't printed much in the way of flexibles, but a lot of folks say it's pretty darn good flexible printer in that regard. We'll find out. We'll find out as I start using it more. Now with, now with the enclosure, I'll use it more. Uh, do you ever contact support? Seems easier to diagnose and fix on your own. Thing is, it might be easier for you. It might be easier for you, but that's a thing that kind of, kind of comes up is what's easy for me isn't necessarily true for everybody, you know? He, uh, Papa, uh, Papa Plintus said, I got a used Mark IV, uh, a Mark III not long ago. And it, um, and I don't know what it is, but I just can't get myself to like it. I never liked my Mark III. I had a Mark III S Plus. Um, I had a Mark III S Plus, and I had the same feeling about that. I never clicked with the machine. I just never did. It was noisier than I cared for it to be. It print quality was good. wasn't fast, but like it's just never. I had I had kind of a lemon. I had various problems go wrong with it, like. Parts just didn't work. Uh, bad thermistor out of the box. Dumb things. I just never clicked with that machine. The Mark IV immediately felt like a different experience. First layers drove me nuts on the Mark III. I could never get a good first layer. Like I could, but then the next print, it felt like it would be wrong. And then there's Z offset calibration adjustment. The first layer stuff on, on Prusa's was so, in live Z adjust or whatever, so annoying um, on the Mark III. The Mark IV just works. Like every complaint I had about the Mark III, I don't have about the Mark IV. Which is honestly, it's hard to impart that, but that is the thing that really struck me when I got the Mark IV out of the box and started using it was, I was worried I was gonna dislike it because I disliked the Mark III. Uh, it just wasn't for me. Not the case. Uh, it hasn't been the case. Uh, you were on the verge of getting a Mark, a Mark IV. 
was weird because so many people love the Mark III. Yeah, totally. I, I felt the same way. When I got my Mark III, I bought my Mark III and I, you know, I, I only had a couple machines at that time and I bought a Mark III because everybody said it was the best thing since sliced bread and I just never fell in love with it. Just never, it was never for me. Um, but I definitely feel much more positive about the Mark IV than I did about the Mark III. There's always the Mark 3.9 upgrade kit or like, but those, you can do that stuff, like upgrade a Mark III to a Mark IV-ish or all the way to a Mark IV, but it's so expensive. I'm excited for flex tap on a Trident on my Trident. Uh, is that using a strain gauge or something? Oh, oh, you were talking about that. It uses the printed parts to comply and I forgot you talked about that on, on the last stream. I'm curious how that's going to work out for you, long term especially. All right, all the profiles have the logo at the top, done. Assemble the top frame section, cool. We're moving right along now. Now we're moving right along. I'm just, uh, the Hobbspot, Hobbspot never connected. Wonder if I can connect with my phone. Probably do that. Jose, welcome. Let me test real quick as I'm hiding from the camera. Camera. Hey, look at that. That worked. Remind me later. Cool. I can use the OpsBot camera. For some reason it's not connecting to my PC at the moment. On a stream of streams. I, I I imagine one of the circles of hell is dedicated to live adjusting Z offset. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, flex tap. Uh, he was talking about it previously. It uses, it get rid, it gets rid of the uh, rail and, or um, get rid. It gets rid of a lot of the parts, doesn't it? A lot of the moving parts. Okay, now the op spot's working. Didn't want to connect to my PC for some reason, but it is connecting to my phone. So, which is honestly probably better anyway. Ah! Um, great deals. Of, yes. Uh, uh, what was I saying? Um, Micro Center's Inland brand P, uh, ASA is Polymaker ASA. Absolutely. I generally don't find it's much better price, but it is handy to be able to go to pick some up when I need to. I swear it's also usually maybe a little moister, like they maybe get the second run versus Polymaker's house brand, but but I could be wrong. I could be making that up. What camera uh, solutions am I going to use for that enclosure? No idea. Maybe just a wise cam I can check. I've got a couple of extra wise cams. Like 19-ish dollars for a roll? Shit. I feel like I'm, uh, I'm misremembering then. Um, yeah, I'll probably just use a wise cam. I've got a couple of RSTP wise cams. Not that I'll connect it with their software. I, I don't know about that, but, uh, but at least just to be able to pull it up and check all my printers in like one place. I've been meaning to do that forever. Get everything set up on like one page I can reference for all of my printers. So I can monitor them at night or whatever. Yeah. Thanks for releasing the Mercury files. You are welcome. You're welcome. Thanks for downloading them, I assume. It is appreciated and it does help out. All right. 
a little awkward putting these up here, but it's working. It's working. Cool. Wish Polymaker was easier to get in the UK. I wish you folks had better options. Is this your day job? Yes, it is. This is all I do. You are looking at my day job. Yep. Content creation is my full-time gig. Tis all I do. So every little bit of support really helps out. Thank you. Because <laughs> it is not an easy job to like keep afloat, it feels like, a lot of the time. We try, we try our best. All right, next two. Uh, put this one in. Three D Jake now has Galaxy filament, uh, Polymaker Galaxy, but it's forty forty uh, euro for ASA. Huh. I know it's like 35, it's almost 35, 40 here. Gene thinks you're building a new house. Nah. Gene's snoozing in a bed. I don't care. Doesn't care. I wonder, wonder if she'd put up with that if I put the bed in the chamber here. Uh, only way to get Polymaker in Mexico is uh, through Amazon US. Huh, that stinks. But it's worth it, if annoying. Well, it's good stuff, so there's that. But that does sound annoying. Oh, plus shipping. Yeah, that doesn't help. Heated cat chamber. <laughs> A heated cat enclosure. Forty dollars for PLA. Yeah, that uh, that's not fun. Eighty for ASA. Jesus. What do I think of the Konomi Two? Uh, for Big Tree Tech, I haven't used it yet. In fact, they they gave me one to give away to you folks on stream, and I just haven't I haven't remembered to do it. I haven't remembered to do it. Should do that. Maybe uh, next stream we'll do that. I need to set up like a Google form or something to do that with. They 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 told they sent me one, and then they told me they told me they give away one to somebody on stream, but I uh, I forgot <laughs> until you just said something. I didn't forget till you said it. I, I remembered yesterday, actually, but... But... I remembered when Steve was doing his weekly giveaways yesterday. Wish Prusha had ASA again, have so many points. Oh, that's thanks. It's one of the problems with like reward systems is you're really reliant on on the folks offering the rewards. I'm not a fan of reward systems. Rather just get paid. Can I just get paid? that up a little bit well I make a video series about the trident I will make a video about the trident I'll probably do like an overview video just like uh here's all the specs 
How does one start to get paid by Thangs? Um, I can't, I can't answer that. I'm sorry. I've been work. We've been working with Thangs for years. I did test the official documentation clipper screen stuff about how to rotate it. That did not work for me. We will, we'll play with that whole rotation stuff um, when on stream at some point. So I can show folks like what does and doesn't work or hasn't worked for me. Um, just to like break that down a little bit. To my knowledge, I've tried everything people have uh, have told. Uh, yeah, I, I they they invited me like Thangs invited me to work with them effectively, and I just I, so I have no idea beyond that. Um, they do have like membership programs on Thangs, so like you can set up a membership program and people can join like a Patreon, <coughs> and that's one way you can make money off of there which uh printables has that as well right all right a few more screws to tighten up and we got the whole frame of the enclosure together and the print just finished behind me Clipper screen strange sometimes. Took me a long time to figure out how to get mine to work properly. Honestly, I I normally don't have any problem with clipper screen. Um, this has been the biggest problem I've ever had with it. That it just doesn't want to work that way. Just doesn't want to rotate for me. tight uh, matrix stuff was not uh, to rotate was not working on touch input correct I can get the, I can easily uh, on clipper screen on that machine I can easily get the display to rotate that I have no problem I can get the display to rotate no problem it's getting the touch input to rotate that doesn't work I tried multiple modifications of like config within Linux to make it happen. I tried adjusting the settings within the official documentation Clipper screen recommends. Um, I forget, I tried uninstalling and reinstalling Clipper entirely numerous times so I could fresh install Clipper screen. Didn't make a difference. I guess I've got to work on that machine and I've got to do some firmware updating on it. So we will probably do a stream where we will just like crowdsource opinions about how to fix it and we'll just sit there and try different stuff over and over again until it either works or it doesn't and then everybody can see what i'm talking about why it doesn't work <laughs> like just try this here you go didn't work we'll figure it out or we won't i don't know i got a few parts for that project i need uh need to sort out and we'll get to that Okay, we got the frame assembled. Now we can put the top panel in. Instructions. Top panel is in the box. All right, top panel. Uh, cable tie points should be facing downward. This thing does look damn good. It's a darn good looking uh, enclosure. I will 100% agree with that. Ah, oh, damn it. It's got to go from the inside up. Okay. Yay. And M3x4s and all 16 of them. Just designed the Konomi 2 center cover for the skirt of, for the Mercury 1. Now the rest to go. Oh, that's rad. That's rad. All right, lining these up is a bit annoying, I think. Um, go back to the obsbot angle, I guess. Ah! <laughs> All right, 
lined up. This is annoying. Why is that not grabbing? There it goes. One! Flip it. Yeah, but the problem is the screws have to go in from that side. So I can flip it over so the panel will get where it needs to be, but then... But then gravity will hold the panel, but I can't access the screws. So... Kind of a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. I just need to get one or two. I. It would be a little easier sideways, but not a lot. Okay, two are in, now it's easy. Now it's easy. Sounds like Ruby's home. What time is it? 7.30. All right, done. Or well, in, started. Cool. And she's getting dinner going, so I'm not gonna start to wind down, I do believe. Oh yeah, that printed like shit. I'm gonna reprint that mount, that's for sure. Let me grab the the uh, the part the part I said I needed finished on the on the uh, 2.4, and it printed like crap. Printed like crap. I can see that from here. This thing is built like a tank. Thing is built like a freaking tank. I am very glad I charged up the screwdriver. Very glad I charged up the screwdriver. She's right here. Domino. Mom's looking for you. She hasn't done the thing yet, so. What you doing, kiddo? <laughs> okay, don't worry about it. You lost yours, your wrist was hurting by the end. I believe that. I believe that. Okay. Eh. What are you doing, dude? This will be usable. It looks like shit, but it's usable. Crap overhangs. Like I said, this thing's all overhang. This printed beautifully. This didn't. Doesn't make a lot. Layer time. It's all down to layer time up there. All down to layer time on that. So like down here, layer time was fine for the overhang. Same, pretty much the same angle. But because up here, it's just short little layer. Short little layer. It just... Didn't have enough layer time. I need to slow down layer times to print this part better. Honestly, it's strong. I could use it like this probably. I just don't like it and want to reprint it. So I will be reprinting that. It's fine. I'm not going to finish this today anyway. So it's not going to get finished today anyway. All right. What's next? Just all the PSU lock parts. P 
PSU handle to install. Okay, PSU handle, PSU lock, and M3x8 screws. Weird. Uh, do I have an engineering background? No. Uh, I have no engineering background. I am a fabricator. So I was the person who had to make what an engineer said uh, reality. <laughs> so that's where my background comes from. Actually, dynamic overhang doesn't help with that. Exactly. Like, I need to slow down layer times entirely for that section. Dynamic overhang helped on the earlier part where there was enough layer time. I need to slow down layer times. That was a bad setting choice on my part. Um... Nope, no engineering background, just practical application of engineering principles, I guess is the best way to put it. So, I was a metal fabricator. All right. Fabricators and engineers do not always like each other, I've heard. That is very accurate. Uh, there's a lot of cursing of, of engineers' names in fabrication. Okay, I need to find... I need to find parts for this power supply mount thing, whatever it is. Power supply cables. Oh, here it is. PSU handle and PSU retainer and locks, cool. I've been on both sides of that war. <laughs> yeah, it's a war, all right. It's a war, all right. Okay, so these go into here. Some square nuts press into here. What the heck does this do? I'm not understanding this. M3 by 8. Install these. Orienting closure like in the picture. That's where I'm at now. Same dynamic as service manager and mechanics. Yeah, pretty much. I would agree with that. Studying mechanical engineering, so you're trying to be one of the good ones. Honestly, engineers are a critical necessity. Um, and the world would not be the world it is without engineers. I would say go take some welding classes and go take some fabrication classes or something like that to just get some practical application of what you're learning so you can see real world application. It will heavily inform your design, I would bet. Okay. This threads into here. I am so confused by, by these. I guess they just thread into the plastic on this. Alright, I need M3 by 8s. couple of M3x8s in here. Uh, a Fusion 360, yes, that's what I use. Sorry, I was answering that question. I trailed off. Uh, I like Fusion 360, personally. It fits my needs very well. You send an engineer out on the floor for a couple of months so they can learn. I mean, honestly, I think that would be the ideal situation. Everybody has to do everybody's job a little bit. Also, maybe don't, be, don't sweat it because somebody's going to be ticked off at you no matter what. Very accurate. That's very accurate. No matter what, somebody's going to find something to be irritated about. That's fair. Um, where are the M3 by 8s? There's a handful of M3 by 8s in here. Spend a, 
spend a few months on the floor, it helps for sure. Sound that? See, that makes sense. Yeah, being able to like visualize what you're going to be doing in real world application, in my opinion, makes a big difference. Switched from three uh, Fusion 360 to on shape. I looked at switching, and I just never really, uh, never made the jump or messed with it enough. Okay, so these go from the outside. Do these line up? No. Where do these go? Where the heck do these go? Oh, this hole? I don't understand. I don't understand. It shows orient the enclosure, focus on the left side, far corner from you. That's where I'm at. Maker's Muse did a good comparison. Um, yeah, I, I, I never got around to watching that because I really wasn't looking to change, so it didn't didn't serve much for me, but... Oh, okay, so this is just a holder to line these up, pretty much, seems like. Not to really... Got it. That's where I'm wrong. I'm looking at this like I'm actually bolting this part on, but no, it's only temporary to put these parts in place. That makes more sense. That makes more sense. I'm threading into plastic now, so... Uh, Autodesk is rebranding Fusion 360 to Fusion. Yeah, I noticed that. I saw that. I saw that. When I learned engineering, I used to use my shop, my smoke breaks to talk to the old experienced people on the shop floor. That sounds like a great idea. Learn from the old heads. At least some. Don't, don't get me wrong. They'll give you plenty of bad input too, probably. But I would expect. I've known plenty of old timers stuck in their ways who really didn't have that much of a clue. I always say just because you've been doing something for a long time doesn't mean you've been doing it right. But still seems like a good call. If you're planning to go in the field professionally, SolidWorks is the way to go. I think that's pretty accurate. SolidWorks, I would say, is pretty much largely industry standard. These Rhino 3D, I'm surprised I don't hear people talk about it more. I've heard about it, but I also uh, have never tried it. Isn't Rhino, is Rhino free? Maker Viking, welcome. Hello. You'll probably lose the instructions on the screen. process of being an engin uh, engineering assistant and had to use AutoCAD. <laughs> oh, was a process engineering assistant. Understood. I thought you said you were in the process of. Mistook that. Mistook what you meant. Okay. Two more of these go in the side back here. This is a weird thing. It's like a tool you freaking. It's just acting as a tool to hold these in place while you put them in. This little wrench thing. I don't think you might be able to see it on the other camera angle. A little out of focus, but 
little far back for focus. Could learn a lot by about how to efficiently set things up from the people who actually use them. That sounds really logical. We tried SolidWorks for Zero-G with the Maker license, but couldn't get a team set up easily, so we moved to Fusion. Yeah, I recently had to switch my whole setup to like a, a team organization setup. It was really confusing. Fusion forced that recently, and it really drove me nuts, because I don't work in a team, it's just me. But I had to move everything to a team environment. Da mama, uh, dat mamut, congrats on monetizing. Thank you for the super chat. It is greatly appreciated. Streams have been my favorite lately. Awesome, thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, I was thinking to learn Blender, but as an engineer thinking in sketches, I couldn't switch to a freeform methodology. Agreed. Um, I've wanted to learn Blender for the longest time, but I think in sketches as well. And so I'm constantly like, outsmarting myself, I guess. I don't know. Thank you very much for the super chat. Dot, dot mamut is how I'm going to go saying that. Uh, I always feel bad trying to learn new names on stream, but here we are. Hope I didn't butcher it too much. All right. Creo 3D for parametric input. Never heard of it. Creo 3D. Huh. All right, now it wants me to assemble the hinges and the back panel. I think this feels like a pretty good stopping point. Oh, that mammoth, but like we speak in my neighborhood. All right. That's the one thing I don't enjoy about F3, uh, F360. It doesn't jive with me. Hmm. All right, folks. I think that's where we're going to call it for this one. It's about time to go get some uh, D-I-N-N-E-R. Gene, you want to come back here and say bye to everybody? Come here, baby girl. She just wandered back in. Let's check the progress. Check the progress, kiddo. What do you think? Do we make good progress? Do we make good progress? All right. I think that's where we're going to wrap it up for this one, folks. Uh, I think I will probably stream after Daniel Modbot tomorrow and wrap this up. Get this done. She's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> it's dad, kiddo. It's dad. Thank you so much, everybody, for hanging out. Thank you for the folks who donated for Super Chats. It's greatly appreciated. Um, I don't know. I haven't enabled memberships on this channel. I feel like that's kind of weird uh, since I have the other channel. I don't know if it makes sense to do that or not. Do you have a Prusa t-shirt, by the way? They sent me a hat. I don't know if I have a t-shirt. Maybe I'll put that on tomorrow. We can full-on Prusa shill while we uh, put this together. So... Thank you so much for everybody who stopped by. I appreciate it. And thanks for hanging out through this stream and uh, keeping me sane while I put all this together. It's coming together. This thing is a freaking tank. I'm going to go print the handles for this now, I think. I think that's the next thing I'll print. Uh, and then overnight, I'll reprint the that power supply mount for tomorrow. So, all right, folks. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, each and every one of you for being here. And I will see you all in the next one. Say bye, Gene. Bye-bye. Uh-huh, Josh. He'll just rewatch. All right. Bye, Gene. Bye-bye. She's like, what are we doing? Hot. Right, see you, folks.